What's up, Internet? This is Alvin with Alvin Teaches Poker, and today we're going to go behind the curtain to look at how professional players turn PioSolver inputs into practical and instantly useful strategies over the board. So most players can identify objective inputs like board texture, starting pod, effective stacks, but then they kind of freeze up from there. So I want to show you some of the basic tests that you can run to start figuring out meaningful answers. So the first test is going to be the rainbow of sizing tests. So let's say your question is, what is the optimal CBET strategy to use on the flop? Here, I set up a very common 1-2 scenario where one player has opened 25% of hands in the cutoff, and the big blind is defending a GTO approximation. I'm giving the in-position player the option to bet six different bet sizes and check on the flop, ranging from 20 to 200. And it's really important that you have a wild width of starting sizes because if you don't use all of these different sizes, you'll miss some of the curious strategies that you only see super elite players using consistently, such as unexploitably betting 20 or 200% of the pot on the flop in both single raised and three bet pots. I'm not even gonna bother optimizing bet and raise sizes for each player for every street. I'll do that down the road when I wanna have more refined answers. For now, I just want to see what the overarching strategy PO prefers looks like using this very generic scenario. Here in this crude model, we can already see that the out of position player should check virtually 100% of the time, so in future more refined models we can go back and take out the option of leading from this opponent entirely. So after villain checks, we can see from the color schema, where darker shades indicate larger sizings, that we should virtually never use overbets on this flop, and for the most part, we should be betting between $3 and $6 into a $13 pot. So now, we can go back, take out the larger sizings, take out villain's leading range, and now resolve this tree using a narrower range of bet sizes. Here, I'm going to give Villain two different raise sizings because we're going to be making him face various smaller bet sizes and he might want to choose different raise sizes against each. So this isn't solved down all the way, but there's a couple important things to notice. One, in this model with three bet sizings instead of six on the flop, where we've removed our opponent's ability to lead and given him a little bit more strategic flexibility in his raises, the EV of the in-position player is $6.92, and when we had six sizes on the flop, it was $6.92. So, by removing a bunch of the sizings that weren't really preferred in the first place, we lose almost no EV whatsoever. So, villain checks, and now this is an approximation of what this multiple sizing strategy looks like. Choosing between three bet sizes and checking, it seems to prefer the slightly larger bet size, but it still occasionally likes to pepper in the smaller ones. So now we kind of have a philosophical crossroads on how we want to proceed with our laboratory work. Now, if you are a super, super strong player, and you understand the general principles of what hands should be checked back here, what hands should be in the large sizing, and how to correctly balance and distribute your hands across the small sizings, then I would actually recommend trying to replicate this strategy. If you're really good at the game, if you think that you can use a lot of sizings and mix up your opponent and always have a feel for where you are in future streets while your opponent is going to be very unsure of himself, then using a mixed sizing is the way to go. But unless you're very, very good at this game, this is going to be very difficult, and it's possible that you're going to lose a lot of the theoretical advantage that you gain from playing a GTO-based strategy in the first place because you just muck it up too much. So from here, the other options are, is there a simplification option where you can bet one size and get nearly all of this EV? Or is this a strategy where you would prefer to bet just the preferred size and check? So let's examine those two possibilities. Okay, so we've created this model where now the in-position player is going to bet 30% of the pot 100% of the time, as indicated by this force out of position check in position bet. So you can see in this model, villain checks, we bet 100% of the time, and this is what his response should look like. Here, when given the option between raising 12 or 17 on the flop, 
it seems Pyro prefers going for that larger race size, which is interesting and useful to know that when I am defending against small bet sizes in my own games. So there are two kind of intellectual tests that this strategy needs to pass in order for it to be a candidate strategy over the table. First, the EV of the simplified strategy has to be pretty close to that of a mixed strategy. So here we can see that the EV is $6.81 when originally playing a more complicated mix strategy, the EV was $6.93. So it seems that we're losing 11 or 12 cents in a $13 pot. And that's a very small price to pay in exchange for having a strategy that is mindlessly easy to execute. The second question I wanna ask is, when I actually bet $4 into 13, is the strategy that PO recommends actually a strategy that I think that my opponents are gonna often be using over the board. So in this scenario, first, I think players are probably gonna pick the incorrect raise size, and they're probably gonna to aim towards the 12 to 15 range into the 17 range, which is probably neither here nor there, but they're definitely not going to be putting in large raises with like King Jack, King 10, King 9. They're not gonna be raising me with Ace 9, Ace 5. So it's very likely that my opponents are gonna be playing way too passively against me, and the actual EV that I'm going to earn is gonna be much, much higher. In this new model, I've given our hero the single preferred bet size from Pio, and he's not forced to bet in position. As this model almost solves down, we can see that the EV of playing the singular preferred sizing and checking is going to actually be pretty close to the EV of playing the rainbow of sizes. So for me, the questions are, how easy is it gonna to be to replicate the strategy? And how is my opponent going to respond to it in practice? Now, when I look at the strategy, I like to compare the EV between betting and checking. As you can see here, many hands are very obvious bets. King, queen suited, aces, 10, nine suited, but many other hands are very, very close. Jack, 10 offsuit, queen, jack offsuit, ace, 10 suited, these are all hands that are virtually neutral between bets and checks. And so even if you accidentally bet or check some of these neutral hands, you're often gonna stumble into an equilibria that is very, very close in EV to the optimum of strategy. So in one sense, this strategy is much more complex than a simplified strategy because you're not depolarizing your bet. On the other hand, often when you make a mistake with these hands, you're losing fractions of a percent of the pot. So that's the give and take between using a simplified strategy and a more polarized strategy. Now when you bet half pot, this is what villain's response should look like. Generally he's going to raise you a little bit when he's got top pair. He's going to raise you with eights, threes, occasionally take shots at you with middle or bottom pair, and occasionally raise you with the gut shots, and occasionally he'll flat. In practice, I've often found that the larger you bet, the easier it is for your opponent to figure out what hands to fold correctly. So when you just pot this flop, it's very easy for your opponent to fold a hand like pocket fours. But when you bet a third of the flop or half the flop, it's much, much harder for him to make a decision with this kind of hand. So very often when you're selecting a bet size, you want to pick a bet size that not only maximizes your EV, but you want to pick a size that your opponent is incorrectly going to react to. In practice, the smaller the size is, the more your opponent's gonna mess up against it. Now, once you've successfully analyzed a single board, it's important to be able to expand those conclusions to as many boards as possible. The easiest way to do this is also incredibly boring, but it's using Google Sheets. Here, I've set up a bunch of different formations, button versus big blind, middle position versus big blind, etc., etc where I can compare the EVs of multiple strategies and see how close they are compared to a mixed strategy on a given texture against different opponents. This is a very quick way to gain a general eagle eye understanding of how you should be playing in different formations. And by doing this with every formation and comparing your range against different possible response ranges from your opponents, you'll acquire an extremely deep understanding of when you're allowed to bet and check on the flop. And once you have that understanding, then you can begin to explore how to correctly size on the turn using the same methodologies. I hope this gives you a lot of insight on how you should start testing in Pio Solver on your own. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the YouTube comments section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Thanks. I really appreciate it.